All right, thank you very much for, for the presentation. Um, all right, so um, this is another contribution to this um, wonderful event here. And uh, I'd say that this is partially tributes to Boris and Schuller because uh, this work started at a conference organized by him uh, three years ago in Paris. Um, and most importantly, there is a little bit of controversy in this work. And I know that Boris enjoys controversy and uh, practically at every conference that I attended where he was, there was some sort of fight or hour regarding uh, certain physics. I can't see if, if Alex coming if he's here, but I very much hope he is because then he can actually uh, uh, say something about my arguments, probably confront them. Um, because what I'm going to do is partially in this work criticize what, what they are doing uh, in their group. Okay, uh, so let me uh, uh, yeah, say a couple of words about the affiliations. Uh, this was mostly done in, uh, at Lancaster University. However, I have moved uh, recently to, to the Leiden uh, University. Uh, therefore, you have two logos here. Uh, this group uh, of people who did the work are no longer uh, are no longer in Leiden uh, in Lancaster. All right. Uh, so the uh, original experimental motivation of this work is called atomic, uh, ultra cold atomic systems, where people recently uh, were able to create one dimensional uh, uh, fluid systems where. Uh, they, they managed to embed impurities of different uh, types. And for example, in this experiment, an impurity atom was created by just flipping a uh, hyperfine state of an atom inside an atomic cloud. And then the fall of this atom to the cloud was observed. And uh, this is another example where uh, the uh, impurity atom in 1D is created by adding actually a, a different sort of atom into the one-dimensional trap. Uh, and all sorts of observations can be done. Uh, one can look at the uh, evolution of momentum of a falling impurity or look at the diffusion of the impurity species inside the atomic cloud. So this opens a, a, a very intriguing possibility of, of actually real-time um, imaging of the evolution of, of an impurity atom in a quantum fluid. Um, there are two uh, different regimes if, if we are talking about uh, one-dimensional physics. And there's one reasonably well understood and reasonably well studied regime, which is diffusion uh, of, of an impurity atom or low field mobility at finite temperature studied in the 80s. Um, a lot of work on X-ray uh, X ray edge singularity uh, for static or mobile impurities, uh, including uh, recent works, for example, by Glassman and, and Quarters. Um, uh, there is a different sort of physics, which is highly non equilibrium, uh, for, for example, relaxation of a large initial momentum or nonlinear response to a drag force. This is uh, something which, which goes far beyond the, the methods uh, used here. Actually, in a sense, this is an orthogonal complement of, of the work which exploits renormalization group, large liquid con concepts, and, and stuff like that. It, uh, the phenomena that you observe here uh, require a different uh, type of approach. Uh, uh, these, are, uh, these have become uh, available experimentally quite recently. So I'm going to focus on uh, these two types of experiment. Theoretically, um, momentum relaxation, we, we have an impurity created inside the one-dimensional trap. It is longer than, uh, assumed to be longer than this page. This is as, as much as I could fit. So uh, we have an impurity, we give it some initial momentum P0, uh, assuming temperature is close to zero, uh, and then look at the time evolution um, of the impurity momentum, uh, in particular, uh, the question of whether uh, the momentum of, momentum of an impurity after infinite time is zero or not. The usual answer in higher dimensions is if, if a fluid is a normal fluid, then an impurity will eventually stop. It will pass all the momentum to the environment. If the, 
uh, fluid is a superfluid, and the velocity of the impurity is low enough, then it won't, uh, won't stop at all. One-dimensional fluids are never superfluids. This is well known. Um, however, as I'll show to you in the next slide, the um, a tour de force calculation by, by the Harvard group uh, using an integrable model of a one-dimensional gas shows that the momentum of an impurity never relaxes to zero. Well, never is not a good word here because they, they just looked at the system of, uh, consisting of 40 particles and they uh, performed a summation of uh, about one million form factors which contribute to the impurity dynamics and there are lots more of course. And then they, they plotted the momentum of an impurity as a function of time. Uh, of course, finite size effects become important after a while and there is a, 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 a rebounds of uh, the state which is pretty close to the initial one. So there is some finite time during which they can follow the evolution. It seems that uh, the momentum of impurity relaxes rather rapidly for, uh, for the first few, few moments and then it's, it saturates at a certain value. Also oscillating around the zero average, they adopt this, uh, this phenomenon, the oscillations uh, quantum flutter. And uh, they also uh, speculated that if, if one goes to the infinite uh, system size limits, uh, the scaling is such that the, this uh, uh, final momentum value goes to some uh, non-zero value. Uh, that is, the phenomenon persists in the thermodynamic limit. Um, so I'll talk about this development. Uh, I'll also uh, show that the, there is a link between this momentum relaxation type of experiment and uh, a different type of experiment where we consider an impurity under a constant force. Uh, three years ago, there had already existed some very intriguing uh, results about this, this system uh, due to Gangat and Kamev. And they, they considered a, a very particular example of a quantum impurity in a one-dimensional fluid, an impurity embedded in a um, Bose gas near the uh, uh, Bogolubov limit, the, the uh, almost superfluid Bose gas, where the repulsion between bosons is weak. And they semi-classically uh, solved the dispersion relation of a polaron, which is formed by the impurity in the surrounding uh, cloud of the gas. So there is um, uh, some sort of solution of this problem presented in their paper. And what they find is that the dispersion relation of this object, of the object that they call the depleton for a certain reason. I'm not going into that. So they, they showed that the dispersion relation uh, looks like this. The um, energy of an impurity with increasing momentum behaves in a, in a manner very similar to what you observe in a periodic lattice. Uh, so if you apply a constant drag force, the momentum of an impurity will grow, but then it will bounce back, and the impurity momentum will oscillate as a function of the applied, uh, as a function of time, with this period very similar to the block oscillations in a one-dimensional lattice. That's this is a, a very elegant prediction, and um, the Innsbruck group, for example, tried to observe uh, this phenomenon. Uh, and the recent uh, ins insider information is that they actually uh, have seen something similar to, to this prediction in in their systems. So, um, uh, these are two uh, unrelated works, and uh, what we attempted to do uh, was to consider a very elementary, a very simple example of a one-dimensional system where we could um, uh, investigate all, all these phenomena within a, the same framework. Um, answer certain questions that 
that arise in, in the context of this, uh, those observations, for example, is incomplete momentum relaxation a finite size effect, or does it persist in a thermodynamic limit? Uh, is the quantum flux a finite size effect? Uh, or how are the uh, quantum flutter oscillations, for example, related to the quasi-block oscillations. All sorts of questions that, that arise uh, in this context, uh, they require uh, some uh, analysis within, within some um, uh, corner of the parameter space of the problem where you, you can do controllable expansions. Um, so I'll go to a particular corner of the parameter space, which is the tong gas weekly uh, coupled to the impurity. I'll show you some uh, simple qualitative picture uh, explaining how, how this phenomenon arises within this model. And I'll say a couple of words about the full quantitative theory and um, new insights. It's, um, it's probably not appropriate. Well, there, there, there is actually um, a, a con contradiction between our results and the Gangat and Kamenev group results which hasn't been resolved yet completely, uh, uh, which has so far resulted in an exchange of uh, uh, comments and replies. Okay, so this is uh, the most general, perhaps the most general setting we are talking about. We have a one-dimensional uh, system. We neglect the boundary effects uh, here. Uh, so the red atoms are atoms of one sort. There is an impurity atom which is shown as blue which is characterized by its position and momentum. And this is the Hamiltonian with uh, uh, the important coupling constants are the uh, repulsion between uh, the atoms and the impurity, the repulsion between the atoms, the red atoms here, uh, the mass of a red atom and the mass of a blue atom. And as I have mentioned before, people investigated different corners of the, this parameter space. For example, if um, this M is equal to this M. This is an integrable model. You can actually exactly solve it um, in the limit of either equal uh, coupling constants or this coupling constant going to infinity, or if this constant goes to, to a very small value, then we are talking about the Bogolubov limit of this theory, which is also controllably, can be solved controllably. What I'm going to talk about is the limit in which C goes to infinity the repulsion between red atoms is infinite. This is called the tongs girardot limit. And in this limit, a system of bosons is spectrally equivalent to a system of fermions. And we are taking the thermodynamic limit. The number of particles goes to infinity. The size of the system goes to infinity at a fixed density. Um, and one, in this limit, one can introduce a dimensionless coupling constant, which is this mass times this coupling constant. Um, uh, divided by the density, and we assume that this is much less than one, which enables us to to use a more or less standard kinetic theory to, to analyze uh, the system perturbatively. Um, and we introduce a parameter, which is called eta. Eta is just the ratio of masses uh, of uh, host, uh, host impurity, uh, sorry, host atom and the impurity atom. Okay, this is the, uh, just a simple statement that uh, in the C to infinity limits, the host gas, the gas of red atoms, is spectrally equivalent to the gas of fermions. So if you look at, at the dispersion relation of, of the excitations, it essentially consists of um, electron hole uh, or particle hole pairs where you excite particles out of the Fermi C and one can use uh, standard, the standard notion of the Fermi momentum, which is pi times the density of, of the particles, the Fermi energy, the Fermi time, uh, which in the language of original bosons is the same as the, roughly is the same as the collision time between the nearby bosons. Okay, so that's, um, that's the mapping to the fermions. Now let's go to the, this small coupling constant limit, small repulsion between the host and the impurity particles, and, and let's look at the kinematics of a collision of a, uh, of a particle. So the capital, the big Q and big K denote the in and out momentum of the impurity atom in the collision process. And this is the in and out momentum of the host atom in, in the 
host fermion, which is not an atom, but it's a, it's a particle in the spectrum, quasi-particle in the spectrum of excitations of the, of the host. Um, kinematics uh, tells us that the momentum is conserved, the energy is conserved. However, due to this spectral equivalence of, of bosons and fermions in, in the repulsion, uh, infinite repulsion limit, there are powerly blocking constraints on the out and uh, momentum. The, uh, uh, the momentum of the in particle has to be less than one. It has to be under the Fermi C and the out momentum has to be greater than one. So we have four constraints on the collision process and we can solve the system of algebraic constraints. Uh, and this leads to this structure of the collision phase space. So on, the, on the horizontal axis here, we have the in momentum of an impurity colliding with the host, and the, on the vertical axis, we have the out momentum of, of an impurity after a collision. And it can, can collide with any particle. So for a given in momentum, there is a whole range of out momenta that can occur. Uh, so what we can see here is uh, the, for any in momentum, the, the range of out momenta is, uh, is finite. Um, and the structure, the geometry of this phase space uh, for um, the uh, light impurity, the, the impurity mass uh, less than the host mass, is different than for the heavy impurity. So here it is equal to, here it is equal to 0.5. And there is one very crucial observation here. If you look at this map, uh, which is there exists, there always exists a range of uh, in momenta of an impurity for which there is no uh, out momentum in the collision process. So the only forward scattering with the same momentum is possible. No, no collision with momentum change is possible uh, between minus K0 and K0. And for the light impurity, this K0 is just the Fermi momentum times the ratio of masses. For the heavy impurity, this is just the Fermi momentum, so this, this critical momentum. Now, uh, from this simple observation, we can quite easily understand why there is uh, no complete momentum relaxation to, to the zero of the uh, initial impurity momentum. What, what happens is if we create an impurity with a certain uh, initial momentum, it can get scattered into a, a range of out uh, states. And as, as shown in this picture, some of these out states may uh, fall into the, into the forbidden region, kinematically forbidden region, where no further scattering is possible. So if an impurity is scattered from here into this region, it will stay with this momentum forever. Uh, and uh, if it is scattered into this state, it is further scattered into, uh, into a, uh, another possible set of states and so on until it falls into the forbidden region and there it, it stops scattering. And if we uh, look at the uh, final momentum distribution after this sequence of scatterings, uh, it, it is going to be some distribution function. This is the probability to find impurity with this momentum as a function of k between minus k0 and k0. And generally, this distribution is going to be asymmetric. There is no fundamental reason as to why it, it should have any symmetry at all, because the initial state was not uh, momentum symmetric. So we are going to have some um, momentum as a, as a function of the initial momentum. And um, what is interesting, um, you can actually uh, calculate this, this final momentum. You can write the uh, collision integral, the Boltzmann equation, and solve it explicitly. The, the Boltzmann equation is solvable explicitly for this, uh, for this problem. And gamma, the, the coupling constant, drops out completely from the solution. So in the limit of vanishing uh, coupling constant, uh, the scattering rate between an impurity and the host atom, one obtains a some non-trivial, sorry? One obtains some non-trivial results. This is the p infinity as a function, the infinite uh, momentum at infinite time as a function of the initial momentum. Uh, and uh, if, if the initial momentum is less than, than, if it lies inside the forbidden region, 
we have a linear curve. The out momentum is the same as the in momentum. Uh, but for the light impurity, when we reach uh, eta times the Fermi momentum, uh, scattering becomes possible. And the final momentum, uh, as you see, uh, bends down, goes down with increasing initial momentum, actually reverses. So one of the predictions of this theory is if you, if you shoot an impurity with a, with a huge momentum into, uh, into the system, it will come out uh, on the same side as, as it's, it came in. It, it, its momentum, its final momentum will be reversed compared to the original one. Um, this is the light impurity case. The heavy impurity case is actually dramatically different from, from the light impurity case. Uh, again, initially, the final momentum is the same as the, as the initial momentum. However, as the momentum reaches the value of the Fermi momentum, there is a flip of the out momentum. Uh, so there is a discontinuity here. And then uh, there is some continuous curve ending up at, at high values of initial momentum on the positive side. The reason for this difference is very simple. Uh, here, at this point, in the light impurity case, the uh, momentum relaxation is due to the emission of sound waves the forward, uh, in the forward direction, in the direction of the motion of the impurity. In the heavy impurity case, uh, emission of sound waves is not kinematically uh, allowed before a flip uh, of a particle from the right Fermi surface to the left Fermi surface occurs. This occurs if, if the momentum of an impurity is equal to K Fermi. So these are two very distinct cases. Um, now, um, one can also look at the equal masses case. We can see that there is a discontinuity between the light mass and the heavy mass. Uh, so one can wonder what, what, what happens at the equal masses, in the equal masses case. And in the equal masses case, one can take formally um, a limit of mass, uh, one mass going to the other uh, and get this answer. But this answer doesn't make sense because actually, after the first scattering process, uh, an impurity uh, takes uh, some value of momentum and energy, and further scattering is allowed kinematically. This is the only case where, after the first scattering, impurity can still migrate in the momentum space as long as its momentum get, does not get gets larger than the uh, Fermi momentum. And in this case, Boltzmann, the Boltzmann equation collapses. The precise collapse of the Boltzmann equation is, if you look at the quantum Boltzmann equation, the collision integral, this term in the collision integral becomes comparable with this one. This occurs when the difference of masses is of the order, on the order of the coupling constant. Um, so what one can do in this case, unfortunately, the only solution is to uh, look at the better ansatz solution of the problem. It does exist. There are some form factor. There is a form factor representation of the infinite momentum p infinity. Uh, sorry, of the momentum p infinity. And uh, we actually managed to um, calculate asymptotically the sum over the form factors in the uh, uh, vanishing uh, coupling constant limit. And we got this result for the impurity momentum, which is uh, pretty close, actually, to, to what you get from the naive uh, Boltzmann result, except, except you have a logarithm upstairs here and you have it downstairs here. Um, and this. Um, result does not show any discontinuity of the momentum at uh, p equal to, to p Fermi. Okay, I'll skip this. So let's go to the situation of a constant drag force. Um, uh, this, uh, this is the same system. We now started with p equal zero and apply a, a drag force to the impurity and look at, at its evolution as a function of time. Uh, these are uh, this is a force normalized to some in intrinsic uh, force constant in the system, and this is time normalized to some intrinsic time scale in the system, just a technicality. Um, this picture contains uh, basically all you need to know about uh, what happens to the system if you apply a constant drag force. Uh, so suppose we, we place an impurity at zero momentum, and uh, a force accelerates the momentum of an impurity. Let's look at the horizontal axis. This is the momentum axis of the in momentum on the collision map. This is the out momentum. 
if we accelerate along this line, uh, the collision is not possible. Therefore, the out momentum is equal to the in momentum. So the, we, we can accelerate the impurity up to the value of uh, eta in the light impurity case, after which backscattering becomes possible. But if you look at this diagram, backscattering is, is possible into a, a small vicinity of the same momentum ether. So what happens is impurity accelerates to this point, is backscattered, and is trapped in this region. Uh, physically, this means that an impurity is accelerated to the point where its velocity is equal to the velocity of sound waves, and then it emits sound waves constantly sticking around uh, this velocity value. And quite different, quite the opposite thing happens if we look at uh, the uh, heavy impurity case. In this case, uh, again, the impurity accelerates to the point of the first reflection, but this reflection is by 2K Fermi. This is a huge momentum transfer. So the impurity is backscattered to the value of momentum minus one to this point here, accelerates back, is backscattered, accelerates, backscattered. And we, we observe huge oscillations of the uh, impurity momentum um, in the range of 2K Fermi. Again, uh, one can do the solution of the Boltzmann equation, which is responsible for this. And, um, and uh, this is the evolution of impurity momentum in the light impurity case. It accelerates, and then the momentum, there is a slight overshoot, and then the momentum uh, stops evolving at, in some steady state in which the impurity emits forward uh, the, the phonons in the system. And the, the other uh, uh, dramatically different thing occurs in the heavy impurity case. Uh, the momentum oscillates. However, after a while, it saturates at certain, at certain value. And the, the rate of saturation has been calculated in our work. Uh, it's not that important here. So these are, uh, these are our predictions. We also calculate uh, other quantities of interest. Um, I'm, I'm not going to focus on those here. Um, I'll go to the Gangas and Kamini uh, work. Um, their uh, main argument in, in the work but, but that followed their original prediction was that if we look at the lower edge of the momentum of the system as a function of, uh, um, sorry, lower edge of the energy of the system as a function of its momentum, it is a curve which, which looks like this, this black curve here. And it doesn't matter whether you study your system in, in a certain um, exactly solvable limit. Uh, this is a pretty universal statement. If you look at the lower edge of the energy of your system as a function of momentum, it will have this, this shape. So if you drive your system very slowly by the external force, uh, it will adiabatically follow this line here. and. Uh, therefore, the momentum of, of, of the impurity when it goes from this point to this point will oscillate as a function of, um, of time. So that was their prediction. It is obviously in contradiction with our statement that this phenomenon only occurs in the heavy impurity case. It does not occur in the light impurity case. So uh, they uh, wrote a comment where they proposed, um, well, the, their essential proposition was that there is some physics in, in the one-dimensional world which is not captured by the kinetic equation. And this uh, is a, a bound state which is formed by, by an impurity. So if you have an impurity, uh, which is shown as red here, and we have a hole uh, somewhere under the, the Fermi C, after the impurity kicked out a particle from under, under the Fermi C, there is a bound state formed by the two. And this bound state um, is actually a non-perturbative phenomenon, not captured by, by the uh, Boltzmann picture at all. And, if we, and what they did, they, they took a particular model where they severely truncated the Hilbert space. Uh, they only left this whole state as one, sta as one family of states um, a single hole created under the Fermi C and another family of states, an impurity, uh, uh, which is parameterized by its momentum. They solved uh, the two-body problem, Schrodinger's equation, and they found the exact spectrum of the system, which looks uh, like this. It is shown for the light impurity case. 
there indeed is a state which is separated by a gap from the continuum of states. So this, are, this is the continuum uh, absent in this solution. Uh, this gap does not collapse as the system size goes to infinity. So it seems as if we can safely follow, uh, if, if the force is reasonably, reasonably small, we can safely follow this um, uh, curve here and observe the oscillations of the impurity momentum. And, and if you solve the problem in the um, small applied force case, indeed, you, you, can, see, you can see this. Um, so we, uh, the, of course, you, you can criticize this, this, this model from uh, various points of view. And one of the, uh, also the arguments are that, of course, in the full many body problem, it is, is not uh, obvious whether the bound state will survive. There is actually no gap separating the, um, the lower stage of the spectrum and the rest of the excitations. Um, actually, there is uh, another um, existential problem with, with the proposal, which is uh, there is actually no operational definition of a bound state uh, of an impurity in the whole in a full many body setting because there is no particular order parameter associated with it. Uh, um, so, there, well, there, there are um, uh, questions, questions to their model, um, but the most important question that we thought we should try to answer is, is about this region of the momentum space. In this region of the momentum space, if you solve their model, you'll find out that the gap separating the, this bound state and the continuum is exponentially suppressed, uh, an expression very similar to the BCS expression. So, uh, so the question is, if we apply a constant force and uh, make the system evolve in this direction, uh, what is the probability that the system will survive inside this, this ground state and not be excited into, into a wave packet of containing different momenta, which is appropriate for the Boltzmann uh, description. And we actually managed to, to completely solve this problem. I'll, I'll show you the answer. So what is shown here is the amplitude, so suppose we apply a constant drag force to, to, to our system, um, and um, k, uh, so starting, from, sorry, starting from k equals zero, from the momentum equal to zero. Um, and what is shown here is the amplitude that the impurity, that the system stays in this bound state uh, after it has traveled momentum k in the reciprocal space. And uh, as you can see, the vacuum amplitude, the amplitude that it stays inside this bound state, uh, decays as e to the power minus k squared. There are some coefficients here which you don't have to, to worry about. The important one is it, it decays as one minus k squared times logarithm. And the logarithm contains the drag force times the, the system size, which means uh, no matter how small uh, the drag forces, uh, if the system size in the thermodynamic limits, the solution does not survive. So the, the uh, oscillations in the light impurity case simply do not survive um, uh, because the Boltzmann approach is, is applicable in the thermodynamic limit. Um, what about the heavy impurity case? In the heavy impurity case, we still uh, seem to be in agreement because uh, they predict oscillations and we predict oscillations. However, uh, uh, I wouldn't say that this is the same type of oscillations. Their oscillations are uh, an adiabatic effect due to the, to the formation of some weird state at the, uh, at the bottom of the dispersion relation. Oscillations that we predict are much more robust. They, are, they result from, from a semi-classical Boltzmann picture, actually, which actually can be extended to, uh, to uh, be beyond the Boltzmann approximation. And, um, 
uh, therefore, we, we believe that the, the two types of oscillations are actually different. They have different phenomenology occur under different conditions, although they are superficially similar in, in a, a particular case of heavy impurity. Um, and yeah, finally, I, I, I have to say that we, we don't know what happens in the case of equal masses, which is the integrable case. But the integrable case turns out to be quite pathological, as I tried to explain. So we don't know um, uh, much about the evolution of the system in, in, in this case. And, and th this is exactly the uh, setting that, that is, is being investigated in Innsbruck. So, um, I believe we, we need to do some work, some more work on that. All right, so this is the summary. Uh, uh, so I, I tried to explain how the incomplete momentum relaxation occurs in, in the one-dimensional system. This, this is due to the uh, kinematic constraints on the outstates uh, in the system, which allow for the existence of, uh, of steady states with, with fixed momentum, uh, with non-zero momentum of the impurity. Um, what is important in our picture, the qualitative behavior of the system depends on whether the ratio of impurity mass, host mass is greater or less than one. Uh, the case of equal masses is pathological. Um, however, we checked that we can reproduce at least the uh, final momentum of the impurity using a quantum Boltzmann equation where we uh, perform a summation of ladder diagrams. And so there is a, there is a tool to study it in, in our limit. Um, and uh, there are strong indications that the uh, Bloch oscillations predicted by Gangart and Kamenev are, are rather uh, singular, uh, singular observations, which, which does not survive in the thermodynamic limit. However, in the heavy impurity case, uh, other type of similar oscillations um, can be observed uh, in, in, in classical and semi-classical kinetic theory. All right, I, I think I'll stop here, and thank you for your attention. <laughs> Two a quick uh, question. So first, on this plot uh, for, the, uh, for the limiting value of the momentum uh, for the light impurity case, uh, the momentum changes sign, Yes. It doesn't seem to saturate. Uh, is it just a visual effect? Uh, yes, it, it seems to... Uh, okay, to be quite honest with you, up to this point, up to the Fermi momentum, one can, write, uh, one can derive an explicit expression uh, for, for the final momentum. This region here, in this region here, uh, you need to, do, uh, to solve the equation by iterations on the computer, uh, and you can put upper bound and lower bound on the, which, which are shown by green lines here, on the finite value of momentum, and the upper bound uh, does not saturate as you go to infinity, but the lower bound does. So we, we don't know the exact answer, but assuming that the, the, final, that the blue curve is between the, the green ones, it does not saturate. But can it be larger than uh, the initial momentum? Can it be larger than the... In magnitude. Oh, no, that's quite, quite a reasonable question. Uh, I don't suppose so, no, it, it shouldn't be. Yeah, you're quite right. Uh, yeah, so again, as I say, we, we don't know the analytic expression for the, for the final momentum here. Probably it can't. Yeah, it, it, it would violate. If I may, one more. Uh, so if the masses are equal, that's this uh, at the special case, how to distinguish uh, the impurity from the host particles? If the masses are equal, how do we? Oh, okay. It's it's a different hyperfine state. It's a different hyperfine state of, of an atom. So it interacts with the with the light uh, in a different way. So you can you can visual, visually image it. <clears throat> what about the purely classical limit of your theory? Because uh, the answer is evident. Uh, uh, heavy heavy impurity will uh, decay. The momentum of heavy impurity will continue in de decay. The momentum of light impurity will decay with oscillations. But by classical model, I mean just uh, elementary balls uh, and a particle which hits these balls along one. Yes, yeah. And so you, you, what you say is that the, rather than having the tongs Girardot gas with, with the Fermi momentum, 
uh, let's assume we are having, well, the closest, the closest uh, quantum situation to this is probably a bose einstein condensate where, where all the atoms are in the same state. Because in, in the purely classical case, you are quite right. What, what happens is that, that an, an impurity, if it has the same mass as the, as the rest, it, it simply hits the nearest ball. And then what happens is the same as the Newton cradle experiment. The, 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 it stops and, and the rest are moving. You, you are quite right. But, but what is interesting about this problem is the quantum mechanics of this problem uh, makes a solution completely different from the classical one. Any questions? Three more, then we stop, okay? Yeah, your uh, momentum considerations seem to me very sensitive to the use of a tongue's gas. Yes, so infinite. Uh, 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 this is. This is Can uh, you say something? Right. What happens beyond this? Uh, right. This, this is partially. This is partially correct. So uh, we have never completed this sort of calculation, but uh, the idea is is the following. I'll, I'll try to, to hand wavingly explain what happens in, 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 in other cases. In the other case, uh, so suppose we inserted an impurity into, into the system, and then there are two classes of processes. Uh, one is the dressing of the impurity by the environment, the formation of a polaron, and the other one is emission of, of, of particles, and they, they are associated with different time scales. So the formation of a polaron occurs at the uh, uh, at the time scale of, of an order of the order of uh, uh, Fermi energy. Oh, that, that depends on the coupling constant. Of course, that depends on the coupling constant. But after the, the polyron is formed, it, it, it can still emit, uh, emit uh, real particles. So, so we can try and think about, about the system in this setting as creating an in-state in which, in which we have addressed uh, polyron with a renormalized mass in the middle of a continuum spectrum, which is the sound waves or, or, or phonons, phonons of the system, and try and solve the Boltzmann equation in, in, in this case. Uh, and then the kinematics will be very similar. But, but we've, never, we've never actually uh, com completed anything like that. that that's, that's just to uh, answer. Adam, uh, I'm a bit intrigued about this uh, bound state. And uh, mm -hmm. I want to ask, uh, is there any connection uh, between these states and Lifshitz's local and quasi-local states, which you get in the phonon spectrum uh, when you have one either heavy or uh, no, it's a, I don't think so. It is it is more it is much more like a BCS BCS uh, pair. It's, uh, so it's, it's but, uh, are these uh, uh, Lifshitz states somehow manifest themselves in in your picture? No, you, you can't see you, you can't see uh, these states in the beta ansatz solution in the equal masses. So well, one of the one of the fundamental problems is that the the way the states are constructed is the same as as the Cooper solution in the BCS case. So it is there is an impurity which attracts a hole. Uh, there is a kinematic constraint on the firmament and blah blah blah. You you get you get a bound state. The problem is that in the BCS case, the, the state can be operationally defined in model independent terms by, by uh, the order parameter. So you can introduce an order parameter and the long range, range correlation or response function will, will tell you that, that this, this state is formed. Here, you can't actually define, or we failed to define any order parameter which would, which would indicate the existence of the state beyond the model that they use. So this, 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 the very statement that the state exists is model dependent. That's, that's the problem. Well, well, Alex perhaps can, can, can produce some answer, but, but, but we failed. Okay, last question, and Richard, I think you can start setting up already. Oh no, there's coffee break, right? Okay. Do I understand correctly that in your picture the entropy grows? as a function of time, and if so, how exactly the heat is removed and why you are using the distribution function in zero temperature when, when you are considering the motion yeah. of the impurity all the uh, time. Right, so the, the answer to this is uh, the entropy is removed. We are, we are not talking about exactly a, a, a thermodynamic system. We, we have an impurity which is a local perturbation. And what happens is uh, when it kicks 
So what happens is uh, the processes where it kicks out uh, a particle from, from under the Fermi sea, and then the, this particle just goes away. It, it, it carries away uh, all, all the thermodynamic information. And this is not a strong thermodynamic perturbation because, because we are talking about a, a thermodynamically large system and an impurity which is nothing compared to the system. So the, the, essentially the entropy information is, is carried to the boundaries of the system by the, by the sound waves. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, you're, you're quite right. Yeah, you, you, uh, no, that's correct. We, we go to the collision integral rather than rather than that. You're, you're quite right, yeah. <coughs> so I think we should call it today now. Uh, have coffee break and come back at um, <coughs> 22.4. Thank you very much. <laughs>